Our next TED Talk speaker is Kayla Tang. By show of hands, how many of you guys know someone who smokes or vapes? Isn't it really annoying when you're talking to them or just happens to be standing near them while they're smoking? And then, when the smoke hit your face, it, your face just scrunches up and makes a funny look? If you think getting a face full of smoke one time is bad enough, imagine having to constantly deal with this almost every single day. As a child of a smoker, I often have to face the consequences of the cancer stick. Before going out to lunch, my dad would, go, would, would smoke in the garage while I'm putting on my shoes. And the entire garage would be filled with that nauseating, ashy smell from the smoke. After lunch, my dad would smoke another cigarette, forcing me to wait in the car until he finishes. I can't be like everyone else, whose parents drive out of the parking lot almost immediately after leaving the restaurant. Even at midnight, my dad goes outside to smoke, and I can still smell that same ashy smell while doing my homework at my desk, which is only 10 feet away from the door. So one day I asked him, why do you keep smoking even though you know it's bad? He responds with, because it's hard to quit. He's been smoking since he was 17 years old and still in high school. He's almost 49 now. So you may think it's a stupid question to ask, considering everyone knows that the nicotine in cigarettes is addictive. But if everyone knows this, why are many teens still continuing to smoke, or even more prevalent in today's society, continues to vape? More and more teens, including the ones at Diamond Bart, are using products such as e-cigarettes, vaporizers, vape pens, and more recently, jewels. These are electronic products that heat up a liquid, also known as e-liquids, to produce a vapor that will be inhaled after a smoker blows it out. And e-liquids can come in many different flavors, such as grape and coffee, but they can also come in some unexpected flavors, such as candy and buttered popcorn. The reason why many teens start vaping is because they've seen their friends and family members do it, or they're attracted to the flavors and scents of the liquids. According to a study, 39% of teens try because of their friends and family members, and 31% of them try because of the different flavorings. Also with, the constant, with the, with, also with social media, the internet, TV, and much more, teens can see their friends or celebrities smoke, vape, and do cool tricks with the smoke, as well as advertisements from vaping companies. <laughs> Several vaping companies are actually targeting teens with their advertisements, not adults. Like, more than 20 million kids have seen e-cigarette advertisements, with 50% of them in stores, 40% online, and 36% of them in TV and movies. And quite frequently, these ads often promote flavors such as cotton candy or unicorn puke, which may not appeal to adults as much, but would certainly appeal to the younger audience. With this constant exposure to e-cigarette ads, as well as peer pressure from family and friends, it's no wonder why many teens would be influenced to try these products in order to look cool and fit in with their peers. Currently, 3.6 million middle and high school students vape all across America, according to the 2018 National Tobacco Youth Survey. The FDA, or the Food and Drug Administration, has even declared teen vaping an epidemic. In order to stop this epidemic, and to prevent the number of teen vapors from rising, the FDA has taken action to limit the sale of flavored vapes in stores such as gas stations and convenience stores, except for the flavors mint, menthol, and tobacco and implement more severe age verification requirements for online sales. The extremely popular vape company Juul has even stopped selling their sweet and fruit flavored Juul Paws to stores and shut down all of their social media accounts to quote, to prevent teens and non-smokers from ever becoming interested in this device, a quote from Juul CEO Kevin Burns. Yet these sweet and fruit flavored pods and e-liquids are still being circulated among teens and can be purchased through numerous websites. There is an age requirement to buy products online, but many teens are able to lie about their age and click the I'm over the age of 18 button on the website, or in this case, 
Yes, I am of legal smoking age. Vaping is also considered a safer alternative compared to cigarettes, which contain about 7,000 chemicals with 70 known to cause cancer. But the only reason it's considered a safer alternative is because vaping was originally created for smokers trying to quit. But many teens who begin vaping are actually non-smokers who have never touched a cigarette before in their life. And actually, teens who vape are four times more likely to, become, to start smoking cigarettes. And research from Geisler School of Medicine said, while as many as 2,070 adults use e cigs to quit in 2015, another 168,000 young people who use these devices went on to become smoke, smokers of conventional cigarettes. And remember when I asked the question on why many teens still continue to smoke and vape today? Well, it turns out about 66% of teens believe vape juice only contained flavoring and water. And 63% of Juul users didn't know that Juuls always contain nicotine. But yes, big news. Most vape products do contain nicotine, which is an extremely addictive drug that only takes about 10 seconds to get into a person's brain. When the nicotine reaches the brain, it releases endorphins and dopamine that helps a person feel good and reduce their stress. When a non-smoker begins taking in nicotine into their body, they'll start to want to take more hits and become more and more dependent on it in order to achieve that same sense of euphoria again after it wears off. And this can be seen through the rise of Juul, which has as much nicotine as one pack of cigarettes in one Juul pod, which is about 20 cigarette sticks. When teens start taking in high amounts of nicotine per day, such as the amount of Juuls, it starts to affect the development of their brain, as well as disrupting their abilities to learn, concentrate, and control their impulses. My dad was actually one of those teenagers 30 years ago when he developed his own smoking habit. The reason he started smoking was because he, like everyone else, wanted to look cool with his friends. He wasn't thinking about the consequences during that time and was very immature. All he cared about was wanting to fit in, but what he really got was a lifelong addiction to a substance he deeply regrets now. After smoking for so long, he admits that he has experienced the damaging effects of smoking. For example, he spends way too much money, totaling up to more than one to two thousand dollars per year. And he's also faced many health problems such as stinky breath, acne, yellow teeth, and intense coughing fits. And these are only some of the health effects he's faced. And because he's been smoking for so long, he can't function through his day without smoking a cigarette every two to three hours. If he, have, if he doesn't have nicotine in his body after a certain period of time, he starts to experience fatigue, stress, and headaches. He can't concentrate on anything he does and because he's easily irritated and moody. My dad says he wants to quit, but he isn't willing to because this nicotine addiction has taken over his entire body over the last 30 years. He knows he could get lung cancer and heart disease, but he still doesn't care. But what's worse is that he doesn't think about how his secondhand smoke can affect others around him, including myself. My mom, my brother, and I have been breathing in my dad's secondhand smoke for basically our entire lives. And it's disgusting because we're literally breathing in hundreds of toxic chemicals from the smoke. And you may think, oh, secondhand smoke from vaping or secondhand smoke aerosol is safer because it's just water vapor. But that same water vapor is actually made of the same hundreds of chemicals found in the smoke of cigarettes, such as lead and ultrafine particles, which can still cause cancer and damage to your lungs as well as others. And did you know that about 480,000 people in the U.S. die each year because of smoking? That also includes the 41,000 people that pass away from secondhand smoke, with 7,330 from lung cancer and 33,950 from heart disease. And besides the secondhand smoke that I have to breathe in daily, you don't even know how many times I've gotten the same question from my friends when they see my dad smoking or when they hear him mention him smoking. They'll ask, oh my god, your dad smokes? And yeah, of course I'll respond with, oh yeah, but it's pretty gross though. And sometimes I'll ask, oh, does your dad smoke? And they'll either respond with, no, he doesn't. Or, oh yeah, he used to, but now he quit. And this makes me feel really sad. Because I have to see day, daily on how smoking has negatively impacted my dad's life and question why he isn't able to quit 
but other people's parents can. And sometimes I think to myself, what if my friends smell the cigarettes in my car? Or what if my dad gets a stroke all of a sudden because of his smoking? Like, I love my dad, and I understand how hard it is to quit nicotine. But it's really frustrating that I have to carry around his smoking habit everywhere I go, even though I wasn't the one that made the decision 30 years ago. And put yourself in this situation. 30 years into the future, you're married and you have kids. After vaping for a period of time, you've converted to cigarettes. Your kids and your spouse hate your smoking habits, but you're just so addicted that you can't stop. And when they tell everybody that you smoke every single day, now you're known as the parent who smokes. Not only are you giving yourself a bad image to other kids and adults, but you're also being a bad role model to your own kids. Obviously, I don't smoke even though my dad does, but children, children who have parents who do smoke are two times more likely to become smokers themselves and four times more likely to get heart disease. And think about this. How would you feel as a parent if you saw your own child smoking or vaping after they saw you doing it? How would you feel if you saw your own child suffering through a nicotine addiction just like you, and maybe even start experimenting with other drugs such as marijuana? <laughs> How would you feel if you found out your own child was diagnosed with lung cancer or died from alcohol or substance abuse simply because you've opened them up to nicotine, a major gateway drug? You feel terrible and sorry, but it's already too late. And you may think I'm exaggerating, but these things have happened in real life. Just last year, 15,000 people died while using cocaine, with 81% of cocaine users having smoked cigarettes before. If you didn't think teen vaping and smoking were this serious before, prior to this talk, you may want to reconsider now. I hope that you're able to take away from the facts and experiences of my dad and I that smoking and vaping are cool and will not affect your life in a positive way. If you choose to continue or start smoking or vaping, you will end up hurting yourself, your physical wellness, and everyone around you, including the ones you love the most. You may not feel anything now, but your choices will come back to haunt you in the future, just like it did to my dad. If my dad could go back to the past, he said he would have never accepted that cigarette from his friend and begin smoking. His advice to everyone is, don't ever start smoking or vaping. Don't even think about trying it because you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Thank you.